Greetings and salutations my fellow gamers and welcome back to my channel. It's been over two years since my playthrough of Fallout 4 as the Incredible Hulk, and I've been eager to do another playthrough since. And with the Fallout TV show airing this month, I figured now was the perfect opportunity to do so. However, I wanted to do something different this time. I wanted to try something that wouldn't just result in a poorly disguised melee run. So after thinking about this for a while, I came across the next great idea. I decided to find out, can you beat Fallout 76 as a Civil War soldier? The decision mostly came from my experience using the black powder rifle during my first playthrough of Fallout 76. I distinctly remember it being effective, but also very time consuming thanks to the reload speed. I figured it would make for an interesting video, since the power would be offset by how many rounds I could use per minute. So for this playthrough, I'll be limiting myself to weapons that would have been available during the American Civil War. This will mostly include black powder weapons but I'll be including others if they were used during the war or follow the black powder standard. I won't be focusing on armor for this run, as well as medicine. That being said, I'll try and avoid chems as much as I can since they weren't available during the war. Now I won't be completing the main story of Fallout 76, as that would take too long. Also, that requires using non-black powder weapons like nukes, which isn't allowed. Therefore, I decided to beat the secondary storyline, Wastelanders, as that's much shorter and more doable alone. So with that out of the way, let's begin. I wake up in the vault and begin making my character. Unfortunately, the look I thought suited him best was more Abraham Lincoln than Soldier. Then again, Lincoln was president during the war, so I figured this could work. Before starting this run, I looked up popular Civil War names, picked first and last names I thought sounded cool, and mushed them together. I was now Orville Pickett, Civil War Soldier. I played a little guitar, grabbed the strange device in the wall, and made my way out of the vault. Since my options on weapons and clothing were limited, I decided the best decision was to get them as soon as possible. My target was the town of Helvetia, since there's a Civil War museum with everything I need. I beelined towards the town without much trouble. However, once I arrived, I was immediately attacked by Scorched. Since I'm limited to punching them for the moment, it took a while to clear the town. I can't tell you how many times I almost died while running around, or how many stim packs I used. Once the town was cleared, I found the museum building. Inside, I found a Civil War era suit and a black powder blunderbuss. Honestly, not a bad haul this early. That is until I saw the blunderbuss was level 10, meaning I couldn't use it. At least with the suit, I could finally look like I belonged in the 1800s. Even if I now looked even more like Lincoln. Even so, with Helvetia a bust, I had to look for another source of weapons and clothing. And there was only one location I could think of, Philippi Battlefield Cemetery. I began the long journey to the Toxic Valley, all the while beating up Scorch to gain experience. Passing through towns and wrecked places of industry, I eventually found a Miss Nanny that told me a story. What big teeth you have, Grandmother, said Little Red. The better to eat you with, replied the wolf. Then he jumped up and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood too. Then he curled up and went to sleep. With that disturbing story now in my head, I finally arrived at the cemetery. I punched some dogs in the face before heading in to loot some historical artifacts. First, I looted what would be my outfit for the rest of the run, a Union soldier uniform. This was the most logical choice. For a number of reasons. But two big factors were that I myself live in a Union state, and West Virginia was formed by those who wished to stay part of the Union. Therefore, I was now a member of the Union Army. I then found two black powder pistols, some ammo, and a bowie knife. A fine score indeed, if I could use any of them. Everything I looted was over level 20, meaning I was still without a weapon. Not knowing anywhere else where I could find Civil War weapons, I decided to change my plan of action. Rather than hunt for weapons I could use right away, I'd continue with the main quest and level up to a point where I could use the weapons I already had. With a new plan set, I headed for the Overseer's camp and built myself some armor. I then made my way to Flatwoods and began completing their quests in order to level up. During this time, I managed to find a bowie knife that was only level 5, and only a few minutes later, I reached level 5 and finally had a weapon I could use. After this, I realized I needed a base of operations, so I set up my camp and constructed myself a nice little log cabin, minus the logs. With a place to call my own, I decided to head to the Wayward to begin the Wastelander's questline. 
I entered the Wayward, only to find myself in the middle of a fight. Despite my attempts at diplomacy, the encounter still ended in violence. Being the good soldier I am, I agreed to help Duchess with her problems. I dealt with the scum at the lumber mill, found her missing muscle in a cave, and even got her robot a new body. I did have to stab some turrets, but made up for it by suckering Skinner out of the body for one cap. With all her quests complete, Duchess showed me her pet scorched, and I decided to let it run free as opposed to killing it. I then went and collected the final treasure, which turned out to be a useless pair of brass knuckles. After that, I was given the quest The New Arrivals and instructed to go see the Overseer. Of course, the moment I arrive, she tells me I'm too weak and to come back once I reach level 20. Taking her advice, I decided to follow the main storyline in order to level up, which would hopefully help me find some better weapons. I started by heading back to Flatwoods to register as a volunteer for the responders. I tested some water, cooked a juicy steak, and finally was told to head for the Morgantown Airport. It was at this point that the run truly began as I was finally able to use my black powder blunderbuss. Since I had gone through Morgantown earlier, I fast traveled there and headed straight for the airport. Along the way, I was able to test my blunderbuss on some ghouls. The scorched inside the airport weren't much of a threat, and I soon made it to the control room and was given my next task. I also took my time to talk with Dontrell, a man who really needs a hug. I snatched a government supply drop on my way out, then headed back to my camp to take stock. Thanks to finding the plans, I was able to build a tinker's workbench, finally giving me the ability to craft my own ammo. Finally, I gave myself some new armor for protection. After that, I headed to Charleston in order to continue the main quest. Along the way, I took out some raiders as well as a Grafton monster. Once I arrived at the medical center, I went inside, killed all the scorched, went back outside, got a tea fuse and a blood sample, and finally got myself the vaccine. Now that I no longer needed to wear a mask, I headed for the Charleston Fire Department to join the fire breathers. I cheated on the written test, breezed through the obstacle course, then made a short trip back to camp to upgrade my backpack before tackling the final exam. I stopped by the legendary vendor on the way and tried my luck at getting a legendary black powder weapon, but all I got was a pipe pistol. One trip through the belching Betty later, and I was a full-fledged member of the fire breathers. Now it was time to head for the top of the world. But it was at this point that I decided I needed to find some more weapons. Ones that would be more useful than one black powder pistol and a bowie knife. So after looking up locations where I could find black powder weapons, I started my search. First I went back to the cemetery and checked to see if anything new had spawned. Unfortunately the best I got was some more ammo, so I killed a Yao Guai before deciding to head to Prickett's Fort to see if there was anything of worth there. Unfortunately there wasn't, which meant I was now heading for the Ash Heap to check the mansions. Besides an encounter with a diseased Wendigo, the journey was pretty uneventful. Once at the Garahan Estate, I realized I would need a key to access it, so I headed across the street to the Garahan Mining Headquarters and did just that. Once inside, I fought my way through the ghouls until I found what I was looking for. A black powder rifle that was unfortunately locked in a display case. Thankfully I'd just leveled up, so I took the lockpicking perk in order to bust it open. At last, I had it. A true black powder rifle. And it was at level 25. Oh, come on! So I was once again without a new weapon for the time being. To reduce my anger, I went around and cleared out the rest of the mansion. Once the glowing one was dead, I decided to just focus on getting the story done for now. After a stop off at camp, I fast traveled to another player's camp that was set up at the White Springs, conveniently just down the road from where I needed to go. I stopped inside to do some shopping, then decided to take care of the ghoul problem in order to gain some XP, though due to my slow reload speed, I did have to run around a lot. Once I'd stopped back at my camp to resupply and repair, I found someone who had set up their camp right next to the top of the world. I fast traveled there where Rose, in all her kindness, demanded I go build her a signal repeater. I was able to find a legendary treasure hunter before leaving, so I guess it wasn't so bad. And it was even better when I found a second one at the location where the repeater plans were. Once I had the plans, I set out to gather the parts I needed, but along the way I learned that I could actually purchase the plans for a black powder rifle at the White Springs. I quickly headed over there, and after a little selling to get some more, I gladly spent 1500 caps on the blueprints. One crafting session later, and it was done. Finally, I had a black powder rifle. I decided to test it out on some blood eagles near the top of the world, and was very happy with the results. After grabbing the last of the parts, I headed back to Rose. 
but as I did, I found a lovely little spot next to a river. Given the location and the multitude of resources around it, I decided to move my camp here to make it feel more out in nature. After a few adjustments, my new home was ready to go. I decided to name it Cheap Items in order to help advertise all the guns and ammo I was selling and couldn't use. I headed for the National Isolated Radio Array to install the repeater, and even killed a diseased Yao Guai along the way. As well as finding one of the missile silos that I will never use, I installed the repeater then headed back to finally see Rose. Agreeing to help her with her other tasks, I ran into a big problem almost immediately. In order to complete the next quest, I had to weaponize the drug karma using a syringer. Unfortunately, since that wasn't around during the Civil War, that meant I wasn't allowed to use it. Meaning I couldn't progress any farther with Rose's quests. Which wouldn't be too much of a problem, except you need Rose to give you the Scorch uplink to progress the Responder's quest. And for all you playing at home, that means I'm stuck! I can't progress any further with the standard game's main quest. So, what was I going to do? Well, I still needed to reach level 20 to start the Wastelander's questline, so that meant I'd have to run around the map and complete any mission I could in order to earn XP. Thus began a long time spent killing mole miners, finding buried treasure, drinking Nuka Shine, hunting Radstags and Yao Guai, and a few other things. This also included going to an unmarked cemetery to get the one piece of my outfit that I was missing. Finally, I was a fully dressed and good looking Union soldier. After moving my camp once again, this time to a more wide open space near a pond, I carved some pumpkins, collected some hollow tapes, started playing Skyrim, explored Vault 96, saw whatever this was, killed a Deathclaw, etc, etc. After helping Grafton's mayor, I finally reached level 20, allowing me to continue with the Wastelander's questline. I headed back to the Overseer's house, where she went full 2020 and said everyone had to get a shot. First things first, I had to introduce myself to the new arrivals. I headed to Foundation first, making a good first impression with Paige by convincing him about the Scorched. I also decided to make my cabin homier by inviting someone to stay. Next, I had to talk to Rose in order to get a meeting with the Raiders. I was worried I'd be locked out since I hadn't completed her quest, but thankfully that wasn't necessary to have her arrange the meeting. Once I'd gotten David's trophy, I headed to get the program from Rosalind's memorial. Had to fight a Mothman and Deathclaw along the way, but they weren't too hard. After gathering everything I needed, I sent the signal before heading back to make the place spick and span for Meg. Once she arrived, I told her about the government-issued vaccination order, but apparently she was anti-vax, so I had to go get some proof. Once that was done, I went back to report to the Overseer, who decided just then to become a Nuka-Cola beverageer. So the two of us headed over to the Nuka-Cola bottling plant, cleared out the occupants, repaired the machinery, and began manufacturing West Virginia's coldest new beverage, Nuka-Cola Scorched! I quickly took to my new job as Nuka-Cola Delivery Boy, handing out refreshing Nuka-Cola, now with my own blood, to all the settlers of West Virginia. With the spread now stopped, the overseer said it was time to find what everyone was after. Vault 79. Heading to Vault Tech University, we dealt with typical college admin stubbornness, ran through a simulation vault and watched a fun little slideshow about our target vault. Seeing our chance to restart the economy, the Overseer tasked me with doing an Ocean's Eleven and finding a crew. I did make a small detour first to do the Nuka Shine questline, as to why I can't rightly tell you. I decided to go with Foundation for my crew, since as a Union soldier I like to work with the good guys. The first thing Paige needed was a big drill, and I knew just where to find one. Traveling to Hornwright HQ, I completed the Motherlode quest in order to gain access to the drill in question. And once I'd secured Penelope Hornwright's help, I knew now was the time to get my next weapon. Traveling to the Lucky Hole Mine, I battled my way through the cultists until I reached the end. And it was there that I found my new heavy hitter, the Gatling Gun. Now just to point this out, yes, they did have Gatling Guns during the Civil War. In fact, it was the first military use the gun saw. So yes, this is good to use, and now I had something that can do heavy damage and fire more than twice a minute. Next, Paige had me talk to Jen in order to get past the laser grids. She tells me about some stealth armor that we need for the job. I nabbed a Liberator bot to download its head, finding out we needed to go to the White Springs. But first, I had to kill Bambi and his mom. Once I got to the golf course, I followed a Liberator bot to a hidden door leading to whatever this was. I had to fight through some more Liberators and a few Communist soldiers, but this was easy with a little black powder. 
Heading inside, I found Jen's mother, who explained she was a prisoner and not a goddamn communist traitor. Once Jen arrived, my recording froze. So not knowing what happened next, let's just jump to Paige, sending me on my next mission. I was told to meet up with some old military guys who would help with the vault's turrets. While heading for them, I was able to capture this brilliant sight of a nuke being launched. Entering the mire, I stopped by Harper's Ferry to clear it out, then arrived at Valley Galleria. One wave of the good old stars and stripes was enough to gain their trust, and I was granted an audience. Needing some Robco tech in order to get past the turrets, me and Radcliffe headed for the Robco Center to find it. However, I knew from experience that this would be a tough mission, so I thought now was the time to get some new firepower. I went to Berkeley Spring Station in order to get a new black powder pistol and rifle, ones that were a little better than my old ones. But that wasn't really what I was looking for. No, I was looking for something mythical. Something I've seen pictures of, but never in person. Something that at one point was said to be the most powerful weapon in the game. That's right, I was looking for the dragon. For those not in the know, the dragon is a special version of the black powder rifle. It shoots four projectiles at once and is capable of doing upwards of 260 damage in one shot. Clearly something like this would be invaluable to my run. The only problem is it's kind of hard to find. For the longest time, you could only get it by luck or through one of the treasure map quests, and even then, the chances were unlikely. Thankfully, by the time I did this playthrough, there was a chance for the vendor at Berkeley Spring Station to carry one in its inventory. So I closed and reopened the game a few times, hoping it showed up, but after a few tries, I was still without a dragon. Not wanting to waste time, I made haste to the Robco facility to meet up with Radcliffe. As I expected, this fight did end up being more of a challenge due to the sheer number of enemies, but in the end, I was still able to finish Greg and give him a new lease on life. <laughs> With the military now on my side, I returned to Paige, who said that it was finally time to break in. But before that happened, I wanted to try one last time to get the dragon. First I checked every treasure map location I had, but none of them had what I was looking for. I then checked a few supposed spawn locations, but these places came up empty. So instead, I went back to the old method of reloading the game to see if Berkeley Spring Station's vendor would have one in stock. And this time, after only one reload... Last, after hours and hours of searching, I finally had the most powerful black powder weapon in the game. And of course, as per the tradition in this run, it was too high a level for me to use. Not wanting my hours of searching to be for nothing, I decided to make myself busy once again in order to rise the seven levels needed to use the weapon. So I became a brewmaster, expanded my cabin, helped Grafton's mayor again, played detective, discovered a makeshift vault, liberated Watoga from Skynet, shot a behemoth in the nuts, saw another nuke go off, joined the military, helped the brotherhood, took down a scorch beast, buried a body, got a perfectly preserved pie, picked up my toys, walked on a tight rope, and battled a multitude of enemies until I was the right level and could finally use the dragon. Oh yeah, baby. Now that I had my full arsenal, I headed back to Foundation to inform Paige that the heist was on. I met the group underground, only to find out that the raiders had kidnapped Penelope, meaning I had a rescue mission to complete. Traveling to Hornwright HQ, I met with Hijack and used my muscles and quick wit to scare him away. I then used my large intelligence to repair the mother load and send it towards the vault. Meeting back up with everyone, we followed the Mother Load's trail until we found ourselves in the vault. Immediately the security was on us, but a few shots from my dragon made quick work of them. At least that's what I wanted to say, but it was here that I found out that the dragon wasn't as good as I was led to believe. Instead, I found myself using my Gatling gun to deal with most of the enemies. After Jen messed up the laser grid and gave us more enemies to fight, Penelope decided to bail on us. Upon opening the next door, I was immediately killed, and upon respawning once again had to rely on my Gatling gun to survive. The dragon did prove effective in taking out some turrets, but it still wasn't living up to its reputation. Upon entering the atrium, we were swarmed by killer robots. I quickly set to work taking out as many as I could, again thanks to the power of my Gatling gun. In fact, it was at this point that I fully understood what it must have been like to use one of these in battle. 
After a little looting, we opened the residential wing, only to be swarmed by feral ghouls. Once they were all dead, we headed deeper into the vault, where we found the remnants of the United States Secret Service. AC gave me the task of restoring power, so I headed off to the reactor. I met Digger at the entrance, who advised me to sneak around the ghouls. Having to take the long way around due to my lack of hacking skills, I unfortunately had to resort to killing one ghoul and a wendigo in order to get through. I vented the chamber in order to kill the ghouls, but for some reason that didn't happen, and I had to kill them all anyway. Only this time, I also had to deal with an Assaultron, who promptly killed me. I respawned and tried again, this time managing to destroy all the turrets. I proceeded to the gold processing room to claim my prize, then met with the now free secret service. I convinced AC to spare Digger, then told him I was keeping the gold and not trading it away, but I still chose to meet him at the main vault, where I found Paige as well. Since he was here to collect, I gave him half the gold I'd collected. This completed the mission, ending the game, and proving you can in fact beat Fallout 76 as a Civil War soldier. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a lot of fun doing this playthrough. The challenges I faced right off the bat were very interesting, as was trying to balance the power of the guns I used with the slowness of the reload. If I ever were to do a run like this again, I might go full immersion with it and limit myself to all items from the Civil War. Though I have a feeling that would make radiation hard to deal with. But still, I'm happy with the results, and unlike last time, there's nothing I forgot to do. But don't you forget to like and subscribe down below if you want to see more playthrough challenges from me in the future. Also, be sure to check out the other videos on your screen as I think you'll really enjoy them. And so, until next time, people, ta-ta, and goodbye for now.